You know the really important thing you should do just before you take all the supports away from the beam that you're securing? You should finish securing it. Yeah, I just tried to climb up on this and I hadn't lashed this one on. And it, of course, it fell off. So let's finish that. Now I can take all the ropes down and all the supports down. I should do something else. I haven't actually tied the ridge beam to the crux frame, so I probably should do that. Sorry if the phone's a little bit jittery, but I'm on a frame and not entirely stable yet. I've got the first beam in place uh, to support the loft in my workshop, and the loft is going to be given over to the kids as a like you know cubby house. The poles that I'm building the crux frame off are, are relatively thin. This is a very, very, very strong wood. This is uh, grey box. It's one of the strongest structural woods that we have here in Australia, which makes it one of the strongest structural woods in the world. Because, you know, our woods are so tough. But they're still relatively thin, and a beam gets most of its strength from its depth. But these aren't beams. These are posts. Well, they're kind of a hybrid, and that's what you get with a crux frame. It's sort of a post and it's sort of a rafter because of the, you know, the angle it's on. Now these don't need to be that strong. They don't need to be that strong because wood is incredibly strong in compression, and these posts are on rafters, crux frames, crux members, on or on a 60 degree angle, which means that they're not exactly working in compression, but they're not really working as a beam strung across a space either. So they don't have to be that thick, chunky. However, a beam, horizontal beam, spread across a distance does need to be relatively chunky, which the pine log which I've put in place as uh, forming the, the dual purpose of the loft beam and the collar tie of the crux frame is so much larger. It, it has to do, the loads that it has to resist are, are going to be a, a much larger, so therefore it has to be larger. The other reason it has to be relatively massive relative to the posts is that a lot of people think that the job of a collar tie, as this loft beam is working as, its job is to help stop the frame from spreading. And that means that it would be intention, stopping the frame from pulling apart. Whereas in fact, forgive me, we're about to get technical and to try and explain, could you butter that toast softly? About to get technical, so to help explain that, I'm using some screenshots from an engineering uh, software package that does frame analysis. It's called Frame CE. It was available for free when I downloaded it, at, at least the demo demo version. But it's really good for visualizing these sorts of problems. See, this is the working conditions I've got to deal with to get this stuff to you. It's working under compression because what happens is these posts, when they've got the load of the roof on them, sag. And in sagging, they come together and then it's the job of the collar tie to keep them apart, which makes the collar tie a member that's under compression, not under tension. And that means, combined with the load on the loft floor, plus the compression load from the crux frame, if it wasn't sufficiently large enough in cross-section, it would just well, it would just buckle. So that's why it's big. That's why it's big and chunky. Whereas the posts are relatively spindly. Ah, oh, thank you. Now I just need one more favour. Yeah. Right, see that rope over there next to the lathe and on the the bottles there. Yeah. Yeah, I need you to bring it over. Ah. Right, yeah, bring it over here, and then get me my axe. Now what I needed the rope for was to run around the outside of the frame and then I used the leveled beam that earlier in the video I was, I was sitting on as my reference to then line that up with the, essentially with a string line on the rest of the frame so that I could mark the points where I would need to put the opposite loft beam, the loft beam at the other end of the structure, get that 
those points mark level, and then I can put that beam up. Okay, so that looks pretty good. But it's a bit high there. And it's a bit low there. Okay. So that looks good there. And that looks good. It needs to be a bit higher. And that's a bit too high. Hmm, now it's too high. Yep, that's good. That's not. There's that. That looks pretty good. So with those marks, all I needed to do now is repeat what I'd done with the first loft beam. Getting this second loft beam in place set me up to complete the rest of the structure. And while the next steps are relatively simple in theory, the process that I had to go through to, to get them erected and get them secured, well, it was complicated. If you want to see that, stay tuned for the next video which will be coming out shortly. And if you don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe and help help the bell notification. And also, something I want to bring up with you guys. Uh, it would be a huge help to, to me and to this channel if, in addition to those of you who really enjoy the videos and are giving me those thumbs up, which is great, if you could also just put a comment in. And it doesn't have to be much, it just has to be something. That tells the algorithm that you like what I'm doing and that maybe other people who have got similar interests to yourself would want to see it. it. Just helps me get a few more views, helps me grow the channel and and, and some days can give me the, uh, the help with my headspace and the motivation to, to keep moving. So if you wouldn't like, that'd be awesome. Catch you guys later. Bye bye.